What's up YouTube, what's going on guys? So today I have a special guest here. This is uh, Dr. Short, uh, Jordan Shallow. He's a doctor of chiropractic um, and he's also a badass power lifter. So he's got both sides of the world kind of with the anecdotes and the actual knowledge evidence based side. And I wanted to do a special video with him today. You guys may have seen him on the channel before he did the knee video that I posted. Uh, if you haven't seen that, go check it out. But today I wanna to talk about mobility and stability and kind of the importance of having both of these uh, in function with the body and, and actually being able to not just move into a range of motion, but stabilize into it and like why that's important. Um, so let's just kind of dive right into this. Do you kind of want to talk about the difference between mobility and stability first? Yeah, so mobility is the ability for a body to move, right? But it's it's different than stability because stability is often seen as like a like maybe in one in one relationship with strength. Yeah. Right. So we have mobility on one side and strength on the other. And like maybe the more mobile you are, the less strong you can be. You cut that potential, right? Because people look at muscle to have an elastic force and a contractile force. So they think, okay, if I lose any of that elastic force of that, they just, I want to be just loose enough to get to that depth position of squat and then my muscles will bound me back up. Yeah. Right. No, that's not at all, at all how it works. So we got to think, uh, mobility on one side, strength on the other, strength and mobility are two st strength and stability are two separate entities. Yeah. Right. So they're not equal opposites at the opposite of the spectrum of mobility. So strength is the ability to exert force, but stability is the ability to resist force. So, Mobility and stability should more have a like a Venn diagram relationship of three interlapping where there is a middle point Which is the best point to be to have a balance of strength mobility and stability because I think people think oh if I'm going to increase my mobility I'm going to decrease my likelihood of injury or the vice versa if I increase my mobility I'm going to decrease my strength. Yeah, so what he's basically saying I'm going to reset a stone form here a little bit for you guys who aren't too versed in this uh, Vernacular basically we do want to have mobility in the system We need to be able to move through full ranges of motion and just because we become more mobile does not mean we become weaker um, What we need to learn is how to stabilize in these ranges of motion and also strengthen these ranges of motion So a lot of people think okay, let's get gain some mobility overhead right be able to move the arms overhead or let's gain some hip mobility so we can squat to depth and if we gain too much mobility uh, we might lose strength or the other uh, side of the coin is people think if we uh, gain this mobility we decrease our likelihood of getting injured which isn't the case if you don't increase stability so again stability and strength are kind of different strength is the actual uh, production of force by the muscle as where stability is resisting that force so being able to stabilize on like one leg or stabilize your arm and shoulder above your head that's stability that isn't strength and so I, I that example you gave me of kind of that grip test sure. you want yeah to yeah that? so uh, a lot of times people's rate limiting factor in strength and mobility is stability right yeah so if we can't stay in stable positions to exert adequate amount of force we can't actually express the strength that we've built in those muscles yeah right if you're in a squat and your knees cave in because your hips aren't stable then it doesn't matter how strong your quads or hamstrings are yeah so using the example of the overhead press like if i gave you a dynamometer right a grip strength measure in your hand this is a question i asked a lot of my patients is like do you think you'd have more grip at your sides or more grip in an overhead position yeah right everyone intuitively gives me the same answer well i'd have more grip at my sides but the majority of muscles that control grip are from the medial epicondyle and down right and it's very little to do with muscles that cross into the shoulder but what the brain does is it talks to the shoulder and realizes that as we go through that arc of abduction and flexion getting into this full overhead position we trade off mobility for structural stability that's why we can't put our foot over our head yeah right so if we're if we're in this most structurally unstable position of the shoulder we need to rely on our on our uh, functional stability our ability of yeah. that rotator cuff to make to tell our body that hey it's okay we can exert force distal to this point right so in that overhead position with that grip strength with that dynamometer the reason people intuitively know that they can't get into that position is because their brain tells their shoulder like hey, we're not stable in this position to, be, to sort of handle load to be strong yeah. because we're so unstable both structurally by position and functionally by lack of training that we want to drop this because this is threat. This is a threat to this. So our brain and shoulder have this conversation. So a lot of times it can be a rate limiter to strength to getting into an overhead position, but also mobility. Your body is, when you get tight, your body is forcing you into more structurally stable positions yeah. to tell the brain to be like, hey, no, 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 this is, something's gonna go wrong. 
So I think that's an important thing to understand. When we're talking about stability, mobility, and stuff, we, we want to be able to express the strength we gain in the gym. And so when we're talking injury prevention or, or expression of strength, we need to think mobility and stability. So what he's basically saying is if we had that grip tester, right, we could squeeze that thing hard all day here at our side. But as soon as we raise it overhead, if you're lacking mobility to get into this position or if you're lacking the proper stability of the functioning muscles to stabilize in this position, your body's going to perceive that as a threat. And when that happens, it's going to weaken what you can do in those positions because it doesn't want us lifting something extremely heavy in this, this uh, position that could injure us. And so it makes it so we can express that strength. And the only way we're going to be able to do that is if we actually create mobility and stability into that position. And now tying this into like some real world application of how you can do this, this is something I'm dealing with. I have very bad overhead positioning, both mobility wise and stability wise. This is something Jordan helped me out with and in my training, I was realizing that when I overhead press, I'm so much weaker than I should be and it's because of a limiting factor. My, my body is perceiving threat when I move overhead. And so what I'm doing is working on both mobility and stability. And I think that's the big takeaway that I want to talk about in today is it's important to stretch, it's important to mobilize, but it's also just as important to stabilize. And so what you had me doing was some of those mobility drills with getting my uh, elbow above my head, stretching out into the overhead position, but then right after I was doing stability drills like the bottom up yeah. kettlebell press. So that's the thing, it's like when we actually, when we mobilize a joint, we're more or less increasing that perception of instability, right? Yeah. So that's where a lot of people miss the boat and they end up in this infinite feedback loop of I stretch because I'm tight and then I'm tighter because I stretch, right? This sort yeah. of this sort of vicious cycle, but we need we need to break free of that cycle by understanding really the mechanism of why tightness happens. Yeah. Right? So the the antiquated notion that muscles are actually going into contracture, like yeah, if you were, if you were in a body cast for six months or eight months or whatever, the muscles would physically accommodate to that that shortened uh, range of motion and be physically mechanically shorter. But what's happening and the the transient changes we can make with static stretching or foam rolling is we can actually just trick the nervous system into getting into that position. But because we've created this new mobility, if we don't have functional stability at that end range of that newfound range of motion the body that perceives it as threat, exactly, it perceives yeah. it as threat because it gets pushed away from active stability on to structural stability again but that's to the form of labrums uh, meniscus yeah. uh, discs in your lower back ligaments tendons so the inert soft tissue in your body that's meant uh, to sort of lie behind the scenes as sort of just placeholders of your joints now have to bear the brunt because you're in this new range of motion yeah. that you haven't been but you haven't uh, you haven't don't have the ability to resist force in that new range of motion so to break out of that cycle we need to jump to stability and then we'll notice our tightness will start to go away yeah and so that so over here, kind of explaining what he just said for you, for those of you who didn't understand that stuff, who don't have the vernacular, basically there's this myth people perceive that if you increase your range of motion, the likelihood of injury is going to go down. And that's not true, both from your body realizing this and from uh, in the real world. If you just keep increasing mobility without actually learning to stabilize and strengthen this new found mobility, you're just going to injure yourself and your body's going to perceive that injury and lock everything back up, which is how you get in that vicious cycle. If you stretch, mobilize, and then the second you're done stretching, you go back to the gym the next day, you're just tight all over. Why is that happening? Because of perceived threat by the nervous system. And so in reality, the more we increase mobility past a certain point, the more can actually risk injury to the body. And that's the issues we got to stabilize. And so this is kind of how it works. We do want some mobility and that will decrease the likelihood of injury. But if we go too far down that spectrum, we increase our range of motion at the joints too much, it's going to increase our likelihood of injury. Now, what I would recommend doing is if you are limited in a position by mobility, you got to learn to stretch into those positions, which is what I was doing with that shoulder work. Um, and, and from there, once you're stretched out in these positions, once you do your foam rolling, you're stretching, you're static stretching, all that stuff, then you have to stabilize and do some movements of actual stability work. And that's where I was doing the bottom up kettlebell press, the walking lunges. You, uh, you saw Jordan, he was doing uh, like a lunge sequence to create stability in his hips to make sure the pelvis was aligned and firing properly before he went to go down deadlift, he was not just rolling on a foam roller before his workout, increasing his range of motion and then getting into it. He was actually learning to stabilize in these different ranges of motion. And to your point there, the fact and what they might not see is how we integrate this into our warm-ups and the fact that if you, you know, we're now addressing for 
one end of the spectrum that we or one end of that Venn diagram that we haven't been talking about. Yeah. So we've we everyone talks about mobility and strength, right? Yeah. And we've we've now we're equating for that that stability component. But in that, now the key becomes the strength component, right? So we talk about mobility, stability, and strength. So we mobilize first, we stabilize second, but to reinforce this perception on a day-to-day, -day, we need to load the nervous system with strength, yep. right? So, I mean, uh, yogis, right? Yoga, are, so this is the spectrum here. This is people, this is who do yoga a lot. This is your fat power lifter who can't put a shoe on, <laughs> right? Yeah. So it's, it's in integrating the dynamic stability with the mobility, with strength, because strength yeah. is going to be that that high frequency neural load. That's going to be like the, the what solidifies this as our new default normal range of motion. So I mean, you could do your stretching, your mobility work, your stability work, then go to bed. But to expedite the process, doing it in conjunction with your main movements, yeah. your squats, your bench, your deadlift, your overhead press, whatever range of motion you're limited in or lacking stability in, reinforcing these newfound. Uh, freedom of movement, ability to resist movement, and now strengthening that, that will send a, a signal through the nervous system that resets you as your default normal. Now this is a process that's not gonna happen in one workout yeah, it or takes one a week, long time, but that's, that's the goal, good. right? So a lot of people, their strength that runs their stability, that's why they get injured, Yeah. right? So we in this model, I want you to you know still adopt strength as the end goal. This is why we're doing this, to get stronger. Because everyone's rate limiter is that instability factor. Yeah. So once we can move that ceiling up, we can have our, our strength always trying to be outrunning our stability, but as long as we're putting in that due diligence of doing the stability, we'll stay mobile, we'll stay in full range of motion, but now it's just a matter of building strength on top of that, raising our potential for strength, because that's what slows people down. So yeah, there's really three feats you gotta work on. That's gonna be the mobility, the stability, and then the strength. And if you guys follow me on Instagram, you saw me doing those deficit RDLs where I was working with kind of a lighter weight, but it was still decently heavy. And I was working through a newfound range of motion that I haven't ever gotten into. And this was another one he gave me. And so I'm going to these end degrees of range of motion that I'm gaining, gaining from my mobility work and now strengthening that position. So once I'm mobile enough to move into this position and once I'm stable enough to actually reduce the perceived threat by my body, I'm then able to strengthen this position. And once I strengthen that position, that's when your body's like, okay, we're okay moving here. We don't need to tighten everything back up. And that's the real key to fixing your mobility issues is it's not just mobility, it's the stability and the strength. So you need all three of those to make sure all those ceilings are going up on all three of those feats. If they are not, one of them is going to outdo the other and that's when stuff happens. The CrossFit games you're talking about, the yeah. guys moving overhead on the rings. 25 pec tears, 15 pec tears. Yeah, it was like 20 some pec tears of guys doing uh, what, ring, what? Dips. ring dips. Ring so dips. hanging from this position and then going into the ring dip, everyone was tearing their pec. They had the mobility to get into that yeah. position position but then as soon as they start exerting force the stability the structural issues they yeah. kicked in and people were tearing packs and left and right they were on really unstable surface right yeah, they were on yeah. 15 foot high hanging rings yeah. usually in a gym you're not going to be out that high yeah so i think the added external stimulus of instability that a lot of guys didn't train on that and you notice it was a lot of bigger guys with bigger packs so yeah. if you don't have that you know, their, stability, their strength is obviously there, because if you look at all the guys that yeah. had pecs, they had pecs to fucking tear, right? Yeah. But if you look at the smaller guys made it through because they were more balanced, and you know, maybe their top end strength wasn't there, but it was their stability was closer to that top end strength, and that could carry them through the, the workout without getting an injury, right? Yep. So they didn't have to rely on their dominant, you know, that one plate that's still spinning. Well, you know, the stability sort of teeters off in the end because those guys' strength is clearly outrun their stability. Yeah. There goes the packs. And so same thing with my glute problem I've been having. I can rotate my knees out into external or my hips out into external rotation all day, right? And I can get down in that bottom of a squat, but I had no actual stability there. And that's what I'm working on now with all my lunge sequences. I was getting into the hole of the squat and it's caused me so much hip problems because the mobility was there because I would stretch out before the workout, but I never increased my strength or stability or proper movement into those positions and it caused me all these hip issues I've been dealing with. And so now I'm getting back into these end degrees of range of motion and actually stabilizing and strengthening. So takeaway message today is there's three things you need to focus on. It's not just mobility. Everyone, that's become the hot word in the fitness industry. Mobility, mobility, mobility. Everyone's a supple leopard these days, but we also need that stability and that strength. So take this, go research some more, and I'll, I'll actually provide videos as uh, time goes on with more uh, Jordan coming on the channel and actually show you guys things you can do for stability and uh, strengthening exercises in, in new ranges of motion. Cool. Awesome. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.